Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I have received my Polaroid camera in the post. It comes in this bag. It is made of like a neoprene pleather and it has this really cool ring pull zipper, which is very 70s. It appears to be brand new, barely used at all, if at all. The reason I wanted this one is because it was like brown and beige, which is very 70s. It does have some like surface scratching. Even the neck strap has its original plastic slip on it, which leads me to believe that this camera wasn't used. So that is where the film cartridge goes. It is the Polaroid Land Camera 1500 or 1500. And it has this purchase slip dated November 1977. Instruction booklet. And I bought this pack of SX70 film, which has the battery included. Oh, how fitting to have Pink Floyd on the dark slide of my very first film pack. So there's the battery on the back there. It just goes in the front just like that and it clicks into place. And when you close the door, out comes the dark slide. Okay, so here is my Polaroid camera bag, all cleaned up. I simply took off the white marks with some eucalyptus oil, and then I actually just stuck it in the wash because it is like neoprene. Um, I stuck it in the washing machine for a short cycle um, with some vinegar just to kill off any potential mold. It came out really well. So the camera looks perfect and now the bag looks perfect too. I just love this little zipper pull. So I did buy a lot of um, bits and bobs, uh, mainly for the flash bar here. So it's a Sylvania flash bar, bought at Kmart back in the 70s for $2.95. Um, I have used a few of these and I do actually prefer the effect I get with these flashes than I do with the Polaroid um, Polatronic flash. They're not cheap, they're one single use so there's 10 flashes in a pack. So like eventually one day if you keep using these they'll run out and there won't be any more because they don't make them anymore today. With that came a box of unused Polaroid film from the 70s, so I think it's dated at the bottom here. So used before August 1979, so it's probably from about 1978. So it was $7.85, so that is not very cheap, but you do get 10 instant pictures. Um, whereas today you get eight. I just thought it was really cool to have an unopened pack of film from the 70s. I really love that. Also this, Kodakolor 2 film. Um, it is open but still sealed on the inside. So it's some kind of strange cartridge. I'm not sure what kind of camera this goes in. I'm sure even if I had the camera, it probably wouldn't work. Pause. So at this point in the editing process, I decided to go and research this film. And it is at that time that I discovered that Polaroid film or any film in general is not vegan. I was very, very upset. I kind of struggled with the thought of doing away with Polaroid altogether because I had just spent so much money getting it all set up. Um, so I might save it for special occasions, maybe buy the film when it's expired or something like that. Um, I'm not sure. I'd have to think about it some more. But yeah, I had no idea that film contained gelatin. So I just wanted to warn you all, if you are wanting to get into Polaroid and you are vegan or vegetarian, you may want to reconsider. There are alternatives out there, but honestly, I feel like digital photography is probably just the safest bet. So yeah, that's something to keep in mind. All right, 
Now we can resume. This was bought at Wellways Pharmacy for $2.05. So then I ended up buying, as I said, the Flash Polytronic Polo... Polaroid? No, the Polaroid Polytronic Flash. <laughs> That's weird that they've uh, jumbled that up. Um, so I got it in this box. It looks pretty banged up. Um, it's not in here. I've taken it out. But it was still wrapped up in these plastic bags here. It looks very, very new like no scuff marks on the shiny plastic or anything like that you have the button here the attachment to attach to the camera there and the batteries go in this compartment here and then it also comes with which is another thing I desperately needed was a tripod mount so you attach the flash here uh, this way like that and then there is a small little nook there on the bottom of the camera which slots onto this part here so just like that push it all the way in and you simply uh, oh lock it in place And so when that light starts flashing, you can take the photo. At the top of the camera, there's a tiny little slot and you just slot it in the top there. Like so. And just down here, it takes um, just the four AA batteries. You kind of just put them in alternating, positive, negative, negative, positive. And that's it. So that is the camera with the flash. So in order to further reduce shakiness um, when taking the photos, I decided to get the Polaroid Pronto Accessory Kit number 186. So this Pronto was the name for this camera in the US. So elsewhere it was known as the 1500, but in the US it was called the Pronto. So this contains a self timer, cable release, accessory holder and tripod mount. The box again, pretty banged up, but the um, seller did say that it looked pretty much new to them and I kind of agree it does look pretty new. So there's an instruction booklet there. Oh, they've got a really nice tripod there. I need to get a better tripod. Mine is falling apart. I didn't read this. I just kind of went for it. So this is the cable release. So this is to take photos without pushing the button directly on the camera so that kind of reduces shake. It does have a tripod mount but I have one on my flash so I don't really need that. The accessory holder. So um, this kind of just goes over the button and then you can either attach the cable release to the side here or the self timer. So those both just screw in with the cable release once it's screwed in and this is attached to the camera, you can just push the button. With the self timer, you kind of just twist this dial here, however far you want. And then when you push the button, it goes around and takes the photo. So pretty nifty. I wish it was brown to go with my camera, but black's all right. I guess there is a black lens on the camera, so it kind of fits in still. Um, so yeah, once you have it in position over the button, like that, you just lock it in place, and then you can attach whatever you want to it. I'm going to attach the cable release because I use that more often. So that is the full setup, cable release, accessory holder, the Polaroid Polytronic flash and the uh, tripod mount on the bottom of it.
Um, I feel like all of this stuff is necessary, at least with an older camera. If you're getting a new camera, they have the flash um, incorporated into the camera, so you don't need this. I feel like flash, especially with SX70 film, is very necessary with the tripod and the extension lead, whatever, I've forgotten what it's called. Um, but yeah, with those two things combined, I don't get any blur, um, motion blur at least. So yeah, that's good. So I've taken a huge stack of photos, I've gone for a few packs of film, just trying to get a hang of the camera. Um, so we'll take a quick look. So this is the first photo. As you can see, it's quite dark. This is before I got any flashes. Um, again, dark and blurry, dark and blurry. When it's dark, the camera exposes for longer. So that's why these came out so blurry. And then I got the flash bar, seven. I found out that you need to adjust the distance properly, otherwise it gets overexposed. And then I figured out how to do it properly and I managed to get a fairly decent photograph. Then I got the Polytronic flash. I just feel like it didn't come out as nicely, but um, like I feel like it's a lot harsher, probably because it is brighter. I got an overexposed photo because I wasn't used to having a flash and I kind of let a lot of light into the scene. This one I took without flash but tried adjusting the dial on the camera. This was just in regular lighting at night. I came out but um, it's quite orange. Then I got two black ones which were, uh, in my opinion, perfectly lit and I used the flash so I don't know why these came out black but they were taken a while after this one like maybe a few weeks or something so maybe the film got damaged inside the camera or something I don't know what happened there and then I tried a pack of 600 film so this was at night I don't think I used flash at all because it was 600 film it gets exposed more easily, so I just tried it. I can't remember, but I obviously tried to change some of the settings and it didn't quite work. Then another one with the same settings and it is again black and orange. I then tried taking the camera outside and shooting with the dial turned more towards the dark side. Um, and you can kind of see some detail, but it's still quite overexposed. So these were taken almost in direct sunlight. This one isn't direct sunlight, but it is still quite overexposed. And this is with the dial right down. So there's not much else you can do. Um, overexposed, overexposed. Then back to SX-70, I just wanted to take some pictures of me with my dolls. And now we have 600 film with an ND filter. So I bought a sheet of ND filter. Different companies seem to say different things, but it's basically a transparent sheet of plastic. That is the shape that I cut out using my cry cut machine. And yeah, so it's just a transparent piece of plastic, slightly gray, neutral apparently, so that it doesn't affect the, the photo. So this is what came out with the 600 film at the regular setting for the like um, light dial. What, I'm not even sure that's what it's called. They turned out really well. This one I took without my tripod, without flash, um, just in indoor lighting. Again, yellow, but you can see some colors coming through and just a lot more detail. Um, that was quite good. Then I remembered to put the flash on I tested the ND filter on the lens as well. So it was two times the ND filter and it completely blocked out the light completely. So don't do that. Um, and then I got this shot when I took the one off the lens. So this is another doll photo, but I think it came out really, really well. Obviously they're small subjects and the camera can only get so close. I tried getting closer with a magnifying glass and it didn't work camera set up in exactly the same spot so obviously it is further away but you can actually see the detail. <laughs> so that is my Polaroid journey so far. I've learnt a lot. There is still a lot to learn. 
it is not cheap. Each one of these photos costs about four to five Australian dollars. So you can imagine like how much this has costed me trying to just get used to how the camera works, but it has been so much fun. Okay, and that is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Here is a lovely shot, a digital shot of my Polaroid camera, um, kind of stored away for now until I can figure out what to do. But yeah, I still think it's really cute. Um, it still makes like an interesting piece to have on display. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, it was really fun when I kind of was using it and didn't realize about the whole gelatin thing. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this review and kind of look at my Polaroid experience and I'll see you all in the next video. Alright, see ya!